Hello everybody and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe. First thing is first, happy Eras tour, I guess round. I don't even know what round this is. We went to the States, South America, Australia, Asia. So I guess round five, <laughs> heading to Europe. It is day one of the Eras tour in Europe. She is kicking off her European summer in Paris. If you are in the States, then this next, I don't know, three, four months is going to be excellent for us because we're going to be finding out which surprise song she's playing, what special guest she has at very reasonable hours of the day. I have to say when she was in um, Asia and Australia, the time difference wasn't great for us. But now we are we are in a good position because when it is going, going to be, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 p.m. in Paris, it's going to be the afternoon for us here in the States. So we'll get all the information and we'll be able to recap it so much easier uh, on this show. So tomorrow, just given the time change and when we'll get all the information tomorrow, we will be recapping the Eras tour night one in Paris, talking about her new tortured poets department set list perhaps, what song she cut, what song she keeps, the surprise songs, all of that will be covered. So I've said this a thousand times, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe so that you do not miss one single second of Taylor Swift content so that we can all discuss all of the craziness that goes on this summer together. But we do still have a lot of news to touch on, some responses to things we discussed yesterday. So let's get right into that. Starting off with Mr. Travis Kelsey responding to Jana Kramer following the not so kind words she had for him and honestly Taylor Swift on her podcast. So if you missed the episode I did yesterday, I talked about how Jana on her podcast said that she felt like Travis is always drunk, that he's corny and cheesy, basically just saying she's not a fan of the relationship anymore. Well, Travis is hitting back a little bit, at least through his sources. So according to TMZ, Travis was, quote, taken aback by Jana Kramer's remarks, especially considering the fact that Travis has never met Jana before and really didn't know who she was prior to this story coming out. Uh, TMZ went on to say that Travis's sources think Jana's blowing hot air just to get attention for her podcast, um, which, you know, honestly, it worked. I mean, everyone's talking about it. Everyone's talking about her in connection with Travis and Taylor Swift, so could be true. And then sources also said that um, that Travis and his friends feel like she only said his name to clout chase, which again is probably true. Now, again, like I said yesterday, are Taylor and Travis having a lot of fun? Are they going out? Are they partying? Are they enjoying themselves? Of course they are. Yes, yes. They are. They are having a great time. But this is also Travis's off season. This is the period of the year where he's able to have fun. He's able to go out and to have adventures and be with his friends and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't think he's doing anything like super alarming to the point where it's like, oh, this is not good or this is this is a red flag. So I think everyone needs to just calm down a little bit. Um, and I'm kind of happy that Travis hit back a little bit. There was a part of me that felt like he was just going to let this roll off his back and not respond. But I kind of like that, at least through his sources, um, kind of gave it back to Jana a little bit. Speaking of Travis, Donna Kelsey was on a podcast this week. She was actually on Martha Stewart's podcast, which go off, Donna. That's incredible. And she was asked a little bit about Taylor and Travis and essentially how Taylor and Travis are similar and what they have in common. This is what Donna said. They're both friendly and they're both generous. They're both loving, caring individuals, which I think we all, I mean, we can all tell based off of both of their actions that they love, they very much love the people in their life very, very strongly, whether that's their friends, their family, and they care about people very deeply. Donna then was also basically, she kind of coyly, was asked about what was to come with Taylor and Travis. And she was like, 
we'll see. Like, you know, I mean, she wasn't asked about an engagement or anything, but I think she was kind of like, kind of alluding to the fact that maybe there's something on the horizon. Um, obviously, she may have no idea, but I don't think any of us would be surprised if Taylor and Travis got engaged this summer. I know I certainly wouldn't be surprised. So love seeing Donna on Martha Stewart's podcast. Good for her. And also, I just, I love when Donna says sweet things about Taylor and Travis, especially because I feel like Donna's relationship with Taylor kind of started off on not a, it, it wasn't a bad foot, but I think there were a lot of people that felt like Donna hated Taylor Swift at the beginning. And I just love seeing that they all get along and they all love each other. Speaking of talking about Taylor and Travis, another member of Chief's Kingdom, uh, another one of Travis's teammates, went on a podcast and was talking about the first time that Taylor Swift came to a show and what that experience was like for the Chiefs and for Travis and kind of shared a little bit of insight into what that was all like for the team. So James Winchester was on a podcast and he was telling the story about the the, the, the very first um, Chiefs game that T- Taylor went to, which was the Chiefs versus the Bears at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, James said that he felt he initially thought that Travis and Taylor, the whole thing was kind of like made up and he wasn't sure if it was real. And then the during the game, one of their equipment managers actually pointed up to the suite and was like, dude, no, like she's actually here. She's up there in that suite. And he was like, oh, dang, like she she is up there. And then he James walked over to um, Travis on the sideline during the game and basically said like, hey, that's so cool that that she's here. And Travis was like, what do you mean? Did they put her up on the Jumbotron? And he was like, no, 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 no. The equipment (laughs) manager told me. And basically, I think Travis was a little bit concerned that they were like publicizing her when it was still so new and he was kind of scared. But um, James also said that like Travis was all smiley and just very happy um, during that period of time. And that the whole thing has been so cool for Chiefs Kingdom and to have her there and bringing in all all the new fans. And he was just super, super complimentary of Taylor and Travis and them together. And I just, I feel like we've seen this over and over and over again with different Chiefs players. They're all just so wonderful about the experience and they're all just so kind. And I think part of that has to do with the fact that you have to just embrace it. You have to just welcome that kind of attention. But also I think it speaks a lot to their relationship and feelings towards Travis, that all of these guys respect and love Travis so much that they're also willing to like take on this extra attention and notoriety through his relationship. And they also trust him enough and know him well enough to know that he is not going to be distracted by it or he's, it's, it's not going to get to his head. Like he's still going to be the same guy who's going to give 110% to his team. And I just think that's great. I think that shows there's a lot of great chemistry within the team. And I, for one, I mean, I am a Chiefs fan, so I can't wait for football to be be back just in general. But I'm just excited to get like Taylor Swifty football back in, in, in our life all over again, because that was just such a fun time. And I just wanted to come back again. So as I said, we have the Paris show tonight, night one of Paris. I honestly cannot believe it's here again. Eras tour is back up and running. I'm curious what you think her first surprise songs are going to be for night one Paris. I'm thinking she's going to do Paris, the song Paris. I mean, she's definitely going to do it at some point over the weekend. Just depends what, what night, but I kind of feel like night one, she's, she's, she's going to do it. And then I also feel like her other surprise song will be a song from Torture Poets Department. We obviously know it's pretty pretty clear that she's going to add those songs or certain songs into the set list, but I still think one of the surprise songs will also be a Torture Poets Department song. But let me know what you think the surprise songs are going to be for tonight, um, what you think she'll sing over the course of the weekend, who's going to show up to these shows, celebrities, all that. I want to hear every single thought, as I said. As always, make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.